Welcome to this video. Do you wonder, what is Pulses Paradoxus? If so, please continue watching this video, because, on completion of this video, you will not only be clearer about its concept, but will also be able to measure it. Pulses Paradoxus is actually a misnomer. Because, the phenomenon is neither related to the pulse, nor there is any paradoxical change in the described sign. In fact, Pulsus paradoxus is related to blood pressure, and there is an exaggerated, and not paradoxical, drop in blood pressure during inspiration. Normally, there is a small drop in systolic pressure, of less than 10 mm of mercury, during inspiratory phase. Pulsus paradoxus, is simply, greater than 10 mm of mercury drop in systolic blood pressure, during inspiration. What is the pathophysiology of this phenomenon? Normally, in healthy individuals, with chest expansion during inspiration, there is a reduction in intrathoracic pressure. This leads to increased venous inflow into the chest, and thus increasing right heart filling. However, this does not equate to an increased filling of the left heart during inspiration. This is because, as one inhales, the lungs expand and pull radial traction on the pulmonary vasculature. Thus, increasing its capacitance, and momentarily sequestering blood in the chest. And therefore, there is a drop in blood flow to the left heart. This decreases preload on the left, and consequently reduced stroke volume, and thus cardiac output. Normally, the resultant blood pressure drop is less than 10 mm of mercury. The opposite occurs during expiration. So you can infer now, that systolic pressure normally decreases during inspiration, and increases during expiration. In pulsus paradoxus, the drop in systolic pressure during inspiration exaggerates. This is because the external forces, like cardiac tamponade, does not let right heart free wall to expand during inspiration, in order to accommodate increased venous return. This increased venous return in right heart, is then accommodated at the expense of left heart chamber, because interventricular septum pushes into the left chamber. Resultant to this, preload on left side is abnormally reduced now. This leads to markedly decreased stroke volume, and thus cardiac output during inspiration. And the drop in systolic blood pressure is more than 10 mm of mercury. Because the drop in blood pressure is secondary to a drop in left ventricular stroke volume, the change in pressure noted during pulsus paradoxus will primarily reflect a decrease in both systolic and pulse pressure. Diastolic pressure is usually minimally affected. Now let's see, which conditions can cause pulses paradoxus? Pathologies that can cause pulses paradoxus include. Cardiac tamponade is the most common cause. Other causes include constrictive pericarditis. Non-pericardial cardiac diseases, such as right ventricular myocardial infarction and restrictive cardiomyopathy. Additionally, pulmonary diseases, like severe COPD, asthma, tension pneumothorax, large bilateral pleural effusion, and pulmonary embolism can lead to pulsus paradoxus. Other causes include any condition resulting in cardiac compression, such as iatrogenic compression during surgery, marked obesity, and pectus excavatum. Finally, Pulsus paradoxus may also manifest secondary to severe hypovolemic shock. How to measure pulsus paradoxus? Automated blood pressure cuffs cannot accurately measure for pulsus paradoxus. It is best measured manually, with a manual sphygmomanometer and stethoscope. Assessment is made by inflating the cuff, until all Korotkov sounds are absent. Then, gradually release pressure from the cuff. The first sounds auscultated will be heard only during expiration, and this pressure should be noted. Next, as the cuff pressure is further reduced, the pressure should be noted, when chorded cough sounds are heard, during both inspiration and expiration. The difference between these two measurements, if greater than 10 mm of mercury, indicates the presence of pulsus paradoxus. An important tip when assessing for pulsus paradoxus, is to ensure normal tidal volume breathing in the patient. Do not instruct them to change their breathing pattern, as the depth of respiration influences the magnitude of pulsus paradoxus, and will be amplified in patients with pulmonary disease.
It shall be noted that, severe pulsus paradoxus may also be appreciated as a weakening, or even disappearance of the palpated pulse during inspiration. Under certain circumstances, you may also be able to note it in the patient's pulse oximetry waveform, during different respiratory phases. For patients with indwelling arterial access, measuring pulsus paradoxus does not need manual sphygmomanometer measurement. It is simply done by watching the waveform and noting the difference in systolic pressure during the respiratory cycle. Management As you have rightly noticed it, pulsus paradoxus is not a disease, but is a sign. So, further evaluation is needed to search for and then treat the underlying cause. As have already been discussed, the most common cause of pulsus paradoxus is cardiac tamponade. So if there is known or suspected pericardial effusion, then a diagnosis of cardiac tamponade should be considered. Do an ECG, chest radiography, and transthoracic echocardiography if there is no hemodynamic compromise. If hemodynamic instability is present, emergent drainage of pericardial fluid should be considered. And this is it for this video. Please comment about the contents of video. Share with your friends, if you found the content useful. See you in other videos on this channel.